So in this tutorial, we're just going to look briefly at the Fracture uh, tool and also the Frowsy plugin, which is f a free third-party plugin to download. And it basically makes the whole process of uh, splitting objects into chunks. It makes it a lot easier. So uh, I'm just going to explain the Fracture plugin. The Fracture plugin basically works by um, you need to place our objects below it as children of a fracture object and um, it's not as easy as this firstly you need a editable polygon and secondly this editable polygon needs to be um, split up into chunks so basically you need multiple objects here and then um, usually splitting an object up into pieces is quite time consuming so you could go into line mode and use a knife tool and uh, turn off these options so it cuts right through and uh, create some kind of chunks and then you'd have to go to the polygon selection tool and you'd have to disconnect the faces pretty much one by one um, that's disconnect preserve groups uh, options coming up whoops actually hasn't done anything one second was it split? Yeah, sorry, it's split. I'm doing the wrong thing. So as you can see, it's creating like new chunks. And uh, yeah, pretty time consuming. And then the way the fracture uh, tool works is you need to throw in a, some kind of effector. So the time effector is pretty cool. It kind of creates uh, automatic animation. It's fast to kind of add some time to that. As you can see, straight away uh, separates the chunks except delete that hmm. anyway it's pretty lame um, well it's very time consuming so um, a quick way around this is just to use a frowsy plugin and uh, I'll put a link in the description so you know where to download it. It's very simple to install. Um, as you can see here, just delete that. You just uh, extract it to a folder. Just simply copy the entire folder and then find your uh, Maxon installation in program files if you're using Windows. And then you just literally just copy and paste it into the plugins folder it's that simple and then restart cinema 4d and you'll have this frowsy uh, option here so what we can do is um, set over cube I'm gonna create some text mo text I'm just gonna type um, quick VFX like that click away now I'm going to choose a font that's slightly more interesting. Already played with some fonts, and I'm going to use Gemina. Available on thefont.com. And uh, what we can do is in Motex, if you go to Caps, I'm going to fill it to Cap both sides, uh, reduce the radi radius slightly maybe, and uh, the fillet type I'm going to make it something else, uh, maybe two steps, yeah. That gives it a kind of two step um, emboss. Now, usually I'm quite uh, picky about spacing of letters and stuff, but I'm just gonna kind of I'm just gonna go right ahead and get uh, get going with breaking this up with Frowsy. What we need is um, just to be on the safe side. Type choose quadrangles with a grid that just makes sure the entire mesh is um, pretty dense something like that, I don't want it to be too dense and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this editable so I click that icon and as you can see we've got all these uh, layers so once again I click make editable 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click while uh, all of them are selected and I'm going to choose select children because sometimes you like miss out certain faces and it doesn't uh, connect properly. I'm going to right click again, connect objects and delete. Now we're left with this one polygon object to play with. And uh, if we render it still looks good. Despite the mesh being quite messy, it renders pretty well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Frowsy and I'm going to select Veronio, Veron, I don't know how to say that, Verono, oh, Jesus. Might try random first, say 64 pieces and then all you do is just hit break now, that, that's it. And it goes around calculating each um, letter, breaks it up into chunks. And uh, depending on the speed of your computer, it might take between uh, several seconds or several minutes. And obviously, the more chunks you want, the more it's going to take processing. And uh, as you can see, there's a little bug here. It says 700% complete, which is uh, not possible. So we just wait for that and looks like we've got some chunks here, which is quite good. Now it automatically adds a dynamics tag. I'm just going to disable them all for now because I don't want to be messing with dynamics. And it automatically puts all your fractured pieces under a fracture object. But for some reason it disables them. So I'm just going to switch them back on. And uh, as you can see, We've got multiple fracture objects, and I, I don't want multiple. Fra I just want one controlling the entire pieces. So I'm just gonna select children, and then control click the top to deselect it. And then I'm just gonna drag and drop them into that this topmost one, Q19. Same thing here. Select children, unclick the root. Just drop them in to the top one. This is a bit time consuming, but if we had less letters, it wouldn't take so long. So that's one way to just bring everything under a single fracture object. I like everything kind of neat and tidy. And yeah, as you can see, that's a lot of pieces. Select children, control select top. Just, oops, just drag and drop them into the 1.9 or whatever fracture object you want, doesn't matter. Select children, click that. And the uh, last one. Okay, great. So that's much more manageable. Everything's under uh, one fracture object. And uh, it's Browsy also automatically creates like an inside and an outside material, which is really handy. And there should be all the same material, yep. And I'll get to that in a minute. So, okay, no dynamics, just a fracture object. So what we can do is straight away we could add a random effector. And as you can see, it straight away breaks it up. Thing is, the random effector is kind of just static, like if we hit play, it's just a. It's pretty much like a, just a normal effector. There's no animation on it. I guess you could keyframe these kind of values and stuff, but um, that's only going to get you so far. Obviously, we can add a linear fall off. So that's kind of a bit cooler. And then we can just animate that, drag that fall off along. So this is like one technique. And uh, I, I like to add a bit of a uh, time. If you got effector time. And the uh, time effector like always animates, which is quite cool. So parameter, I'm just gonna add like some small bits of movement and rotation, just so it kind of breaks up slowly, as you can see like that. Just adds a bit of variety.
then you can like bring in your uh, random effector while it's doing that. I'm just going to go to spherical fall off and uh, scale it up. So what we can do is basically we can choose like areas to kind of break up. So that's the basics. What we can then do is we can turn on this dynamics tag, enable it, and uh, where it says apply tag to children, below that select all. And then go to uh, project settings. This is optional, but if you go to dynamics, project settings, dynamics, set the gravity to zero so everything doesn't just fall down. If we hit play now, all the pieces are basically colliding against each other, kind of breaking up. And uh, as you can see, the, it's quite violent, so um, I'm just going to go to, a, sorry, not force, dynamics, collision. Yeah, the collision noise, if you reduce this down to 0.1, reduce the bounce to about 10, and then increase the friction to about 90, that should uh, slow things down a bit. And... Size increments, self collisions, yep, so uncheck that if you don't want self collisions. And oh, we need some drag. Maybe maybe this will help. Yeah, that's definitely slowed down the kind of explosion. So drag is what kind of keeps the pieces in control a bit. As you can see it's quite a cool effect, like lots of possibilities here. Let's keep on increasing the drag, see what happens. Five hundred. So yeah, that's pretty good at controlling the kind of explosion, keeping it in check. And uh, we can also, I guess, increase the friction, collision noise, 0 0.005. So that's quite a, I quite like the slow kind of explosions and about there. Once you uh, activate dynamics, basically it ignores all the effectors. And uh, the drag is actually a bit strong. Now, because it's dynamics, basically we can use forces with this. Um, where is it? Simulate. I think this wind should work. Yeah, as you can see, it's definitely pushing it away. So you can straight away drop in forces. And obviously, these forces have fall offs as well. So I could. Um, make sure it's only uh, affecting a certain part like maybe just there so this bit can explode more I'll just put that drag back on so that kind of kept it in check quite nice and uh, just gonna hide the wind and I'm actually gonna increase the <coughs> increase the force sorry so I'll just exaggerate it 99 uh, turbulence yep I have to go a bit crazier with the values. Sometimes you have to kind of go pretty high before you see anything. I think the yeah, it's not quite touching. Yeah, that's the problem. It wasn't even touching the. Boom. So yeah, as you can see, <laughs> that kicked the right in. Um, but that's how you can basically explode segments. So now we can pull back slightly. 22, say turbulence 12, and uh, 90, just some moderate values. See what happens. Boom. Just blew away like a certain chunk. So yeah, maybe you reduce that all the way down to 4. And yeah, that's a lot cooler if you saw that.
so we can like explode away certain bits. So I can just duplicate that wind, put one like here. So the V and the U are first to go. And um, yeah, so that's like a basic introduction on uh, how to blow shit up. You need the Frowsy plugin. It's just it's free and it's just awesome. And then um, it's definitely a good start into how how to blow stuff up. And then uh, we've we've got other forces. Obviously, we can add. Um, Simulate. I think there's a vortex. Vortex was quite cool. Yeah, rotation they call it. So add that rotation on the Q. Might disable that first win. Whoops. So let's just have a look. Yeah, isn't that so right? The rotation's kind of giving it some torque. That's quite interesting in itself. It's kind of starting to all the particles are coming round. But uh, let's see what the fall off does with rotation. So we'll give it a spherical fall off again. Just size up the scale, see what happens. So yeah, it looks like kind of certain parts are uh, blowing up quicker. Just hide all these uh, effectors and stuff so you can just see the pure effect. So yeah, just uh, use your imagination and. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some examples of what you come up with. This is obviously pretty uh, messed up, but uh, oh yeah. And one last thing is, obviously, you can cache your animation. Let's say I'm happy with that. I can uh, just bake all, and that will kind of collapse it down, so it kind of runs when you uh, drag the timeline marker. Yeah, you get instant feedback now, and. Um, you can play it back and forth, which is good. So yeah, lots of possibilities. Oh yeah, and sorry, lastly, the inside-outside material. So this is inside. So the outside material, we can make that black. So as you can see, I'll just remove specular. I'll, uh, actually, black's maybe too strong. Go with a dark gray, like that. So. As you can see, the inner chunks have like the white material. It kind of makes it more realistic because I guess with most objects, the inner kind of texture is going to be a different color and everything to the outer texture. And then the inner texture, you could make it like some kind of lava. That's so like kind of it's a bit naff there, but yeah, you need the black. You actually need three channels: black, red, and uh, I think you'd probably have to multiply two uh, textures. But anyway, that's the kind of idea, as you can see. specular off so yeah hope that kind of helps uh, we looked at various effectors dynamics how to use our uh, forces with fall off to kind of blow up certain parts materials and uh, hope that gets you started thanks for watching